Susan's biography. Um, this is a Lazy Susan that I am working on. And I'm going to show you how I do this bit here. Um, and yeah, please ignore the frogs in the background as <laughs> my window has to be open to film this. That's a magpie. Wow, that's so cool. Um, a magpie wobbling. Um, so I will explain what I'm doing as I go, but uh, you, won't, you won't see much of my face. <laughs> So, uh, where were we up to? Where were we up to? Where were we up to? Uh, yeah, so I will tighten these back on. Yep, very good. I'm gonna put these out of the way. Oh, it's, it's always good to have a mask. This one is, has like a plastic bit here. Max is safe. Max, Max is safe. So that's good to put on when you're um, using the... <laughs> Why is this so hard to talk and think at the same time? Um, when you're using the pyrography machine because the smoke will blow up right into your face and that's just not very good at all. So um, I've got this little stand which goes like that and then you sit it on there. <laughs> so, so stable sit it on like that so that it's up off everything and you don't want anything to touch that nib because that nib is going to get super 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 hot right so this is the pyrography machine um, let's see if I can bring it closer without tangling everything right so this is the machine um, it's got a little uh, like values and all the thing. It's bright red, which I love. Um, I'll just, oh fuck! <laughs> I'll just pop it down there. For 
for a second. Um, so it's got an on and off switch here, and then that light will go on if it's on, or off if it's off. Um, and when it's on, and you turn this knob, it will turn on, and then this little thing here will show you the value of this little arm of the heat. So if you turn it down really low, it's not so bad. But you can turn it up right up into this green patch, which makes it very hot. And even up further still, and it's too hot. It will burn everything. Um, so it gets very, very hot very, very quickly. I will just hold this here to show you. Uh, we'll turn it up to the green. And you can see there it is glowing orange. Um, it's literally glowing. It's very, very, very hot. So I like to have it just, just below the green when I use it, which is still glowing, but not not quite as intensely. Um, and I do vary it depending on the work I'm doing. So, I'll put this over here. Um, right, so the microphone's just sitting on top of that for the moment, so. Um, the hardest part of this is going to be not getting my microphone uh, cord in the fire. So, now that we have it nice and hot, um, so spin this round. So you might not be able to see so well, but I need to have it fairly close to me so that I can really get that line going. So it's just slightly orange now. And what I want to do is follow that line across. And my hand will get in the way a lot. Sorry about that. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the smoke or the flames that just appeared. You hear it screaming? And you just really want to trace those lines. And you just want to touch the, the pen to the wood really, really lightly. Um, you don't have to press hard at all. It forms this nice, smooth line. There we go. Um, I was going to turn the light off and just show you more intensity. Um, actually, well, the light is off, um, but I'm gonna sh I was going to um, close the blinds of the window, but I can't do that because of the smoke, so sorry. <laughs> um, so now we've got this one line going all the way around. What we're going to do is line this line up with that one. Not sure if you can hear that over the sound of the frogs outside, but <laughs> um, it's making the really cool sizzling sound. Oof, I'm not wearing my mask. One second. It's quite a tricky thing <laughs> to uh, keep safe. So, hopefully my voice isn't too muffled. Um, I can't really do the whispering, because it doesn't, it doesn't keep up, does it? You can't really hear me very well if I'm doing the whispering. Uh, so it's just going to be a softly, <laughs> softly spoken uh, video today. Oh, careful of the power cord, very important. Can you hear that? The slightest sizzling sounds. bird you can hear in the background is a woolly wagtail.
sometimes my mask fogs up my glasses and I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, hello. I don't always get this close to it, I'm just trying to really pay attention to making nice lines. Alright, so now we have that whole circle. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, no, one, two, three, four, five, five little insides to go. And I'll just finish it by doing this, this little conjoin here. Let's conjoin here. I'll just line, line it up with there. Bamboo smoke isn't the nicest smelling smoke. It's not the worst. It's not the worst, but you know, it's not not the nicest either. <laughs> so you just very gently draw those lines over the top of the traced lines. So it's just it's layering those over the top. And you really want to get this, this line edge to line up with that edge. So this bit and that bit are the same part of the same line work. So you, you want that to be the same thing coming but underneath. Now, my hand is a bit wobbly, and if I do make a mistake, I want it to go into the negatives, because the negatives I'm going to be doing a darker colour. It doesn't work so well on these outside edges, I've got to try and get them perfect, because both sides will be um, bamboo, whereas on this side, on the inside, I will burn over it anyway. So here, this line's a little bit thick here on this end, but it, it's thickening into the dark layer so it's it's fine <laughs> it's okay oops okay so that one go to there which one come under all right so the next one I'm going to do is this one, which is a continuation from that one. So it'll actually be up here a little bit. I'll go like that, and then down to there. Alright, we'll just smooth that down a bit this way. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is this line here. So I'm just going to come around. It's going to be bad television for a second to get that line. I'm just going to bring it around this side to see if you can get some of the sound <laughs> captured. Not so much the screaming. These sounds are so subtle. It's not the best, is it? <laughs> So much smoke right now. Can you can you see that the smoke? Probably not. Alright, so we've only got one little one little bit to go, I'll show you. Uh, this little bit here, the last line work to go, and then then we get to start colouring in, which will probably be a lot easier for me to talk during. So I'm gonna have to concentrate quite so hard. 
Okay, so that bit there's a bit of a mistake. Um, the thickness is coming into the line instead of out of the line, so that's a bit annoying, but I guess it is it is what it is. <laughs> It'll be fine. Sometimes my neck does this weird, oh look, it made my line go all funny, oh well, um, does this weird twitch, which is just really uncomfortable, it doesn't hurt as such, but it's very disconcerting, so just lightly tracing that line, getting those edges to line up nicely, nearly done, it's a bit scary, alright. It's not, it's not working so smoothly. I'm just going to bring it around this side. All right. So that's all the the line work done. I'm just going to turn this down for a minute, turn it off, um, and I'm just going to place it, where's the stand gone? Oh god, I don't know what I've done with my stand. Oh, okay, it's over here. just going to place it there. Oops. For one moment. I like to let it, oh fuck, it really doesn't like to stand on that thing. Alright. Stay. Um, I'm just going to let it uh, cool down. It cools down super quickly, but I do like to let it have a have a calm down um, every now and then when I'm when I'm doing it. So I hope this video isn't too terrible. I have been having my mask on my face just so you know I don't, I don't wear it wrong. <laughs> Ready to do some coloring in? I know I am. Whatever you do, you don't want to touch this metal bit ever, uh, the nib, um, when it's being on because it's just, it will sear into your flesh. There's nothing kind about it. It will hurt a lot. Um, I have a band-aid on still at the moment from a previous burn uh, from this very nib. So now I get to do colouring in, which is all of the background gaps that I'll just make them dark like these bits and then the pattern will be complete and all I'll have to do is stand, sand off this little sticky bit here clean up some uh, edges if it's got things stuck to it and I'll be good to give it to my friends Whoops, as a gift alright so Turn the heat back up until it is almost in the green. And now I want to get the flat end, not, not the tip, not the edge, but the flat bottom of the nib into the wood. So it just gets into the corners like that. So I like this nib because it can get into those really tight corners in this particular design. A lot of a, a lot of edges, dark, 
dark edges and corners there. I suppose a professional could have switched nibs between the line work and the shading. The line work and the shading, but you know, it's, I didn't do that. Part of me really wants to edit this too fast forward. Um, but I won't do that because this is ASMR, it's supposed to be a little bit boring to get you to go to sleep, to relax, to relax, to relax and possibly, possibly go to sleep. This is not a how to wood burn <laughs> instruction video at all. Um, the interesting thing is that you press really lightly to do the line work but you press even lighter to do the colour again because you want it to be as smooth as possible. At least in this section, I want it to be really smooth. Um, I want it to stay, I want to keep the integrity of the face of the board as much as possible. I did a, um, uh, what's it called, a spoon. A wooden spoon earlier. Whoops, hang on, I'll just show you how not to connect there. Here. I did this as practice, this wooden spoon, and I pressed really hard um, on the edges and, and it did sink in a bit and then on this side I fully carved, I carved it, I whittled out the, the black space before I burnt it, which gives it a really cool 3D effect. Yeah, so, well it's not really an effect is it, it's like an actual 3D. We might have to change camera battery in a minute. So I'll just get as much of this done as I can while filming. Um, but I don't want to rush it, I can't, I can't do it too fast because I'll get it wrong and I'll stuff it up and then I'll be so angry. <laughs> um, I think it's really nice that we can hear the frogs in the background. Are there any frog nerds out there? Do any of you? <laughs> do you know? Do you know anything about frogs? Do you know what frog call that could be? I'm really interested. I tried looking up that particular frog call um, in uh, online to, to see what type of frogs we have. Because um, I haven't seen them. I've only heard them. I haven't, I haven't gone looking or anything. Um, so... I couldn't, I couldn't find a matching, a matching ribbit, <laughs> a matching frog croaking sound um, that I thought was similar enough to ID from, so that's interesting. So I don't know what type of frogs we have. They sound a little bit like crickets, but nicer than crickets, I think. to say. <laughs> so the, the bamboo wood isn't the best wood to burn on. It, it feels very different from other woods. It for one makes this weird squeaking sound but a lot of woods do that. <laughs> um, but it sort of melts more than it burns if that means anything. Um, so you kind of push the wood around as it as it turns ashen, which is a weird sensation, honestly. Different different woods obviously react in different ways, but look, don't quote me on this, but I think I think bamboo is a grass, not a wood. Is that true? Does anyone know that either? I feel like I read that somewhere.
probably when I was looking up stuff about pandas. Quite like panda bears, they're cute. And they eat bamboo. I've seen them at a zoo before. Um, what zoo was it? Somewhere in America, I think Memphis maybe? San Diego? I know those are very different and they're very different places, but we went to them on the same uh, overseas trip. So I think those are the two, two zoos we went to when I was there. In, oof, when was that? Maybe 2013, I think. Or 11? 2012? I don't know. Look, I'm, I am absolutely terrible with dates. Like, so bad. Oh, my neck's doing the twitchy thing. I wish it would stop twitching. Ah, oh. um, this is a, a rather slow going process and it's just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so that it all gets filled up. That's a nice sound. There's a really hard bit of bamboo there. Do a bit more closer to the camera for you. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll be able to see. It's very tricky um, to not get the power cord in the way or the smoke. Oh, straight into my eyes, just like that. Oh, gosh. Anyway, uh, it's fine. The, I find the glasses tends to let the smoke in but not let it out. <sighs> So I get smoke trapped in my eyes, in my eyeball area. I'm just going to turn the heat up a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. You don't want any of the end of the nib to <laughs> go over the lines there. Because sometimes it's so hot that the even just being close to the nymph will make the wood go black. It doesn't have to be touching if it's too hot, which is rather annoying. Um, but it usually means that I've got my my temperatures up too high, um, and I should just bring that down a little. It's a fine balance and, and it's a lot of trial and error of what temperatures are good and what temperatures are bad and it varies with the different woods and the different cuts of wood. Um, even if it's the same type sometimes different trees just have different burning qualities I guess. Um, yeah, I wish I had something interesting to say about this but it's usually more of a zone out sort of thing. Um, I'll stop paying attention and just um, just get hyper focused I guess on, on the um, task at hand. This particular design um, it 
took a lot of work. <laughs> it's quite a tricky one. Um, I find my birds and my uh, like lion and my animals and stuff to be much easier to wood burn than a strict pattern like this. Um, this is very much you have to do it right. <laughs> you can't just wing it. You have to like color in the in between the lines and and really follow the script of the. Uh, how to make the artwork. Oh, it's getting in my eyes. Oh, so bad. Uh, if you know what I mean. Like, you, I can't just be like, oh, this bit of shading needs a bit more because, no, it needs to be black inside this triangle here. <laughs> yeah, so it's not... It feels more like a craft project, this one, than an art project. Um, which, to me, are two very different things. Like, to me, knitting... Whoops, sorry about that weird reverb. Uh, knitting feels a lot more like a craft to me than a um, than an art uh, because I don't want to say it's less creative but it's creative in a different way um, because it's learning to do the thing I guess it depends what you're knitting really <laughs> I'm going to offend surely by saying that I don't think craft and art are the same thing Um, I do think most art mm, genres, <laughs> whoa, did you see that mini explosion? Um, disciplines, I guess, of art do all have a craft to them, like drawing, uh, the craft of drawing anatomy, um, but the art of drawing <laughs> whatever it is you want, really. <laughs> I had to change the battery just now. <laughs> so we're nearly done. Uh, we're very, very nearly, one second. Um, very nearly finished. We've just got this bit, that bit, this bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, and this bit to go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. <laughs> right, so. Sometimes the wind in my room sounds very howly, howling like a um, ghost or a horror movie. you see those sparks fly just then? <laughs> Alright. Oh, my glasses are fucking up. Okay, nearly done. One, two, three, four, five. Four and a half left to go. I find with bamboo, it's best to burn against the grain, so not in the same direction as the, the lines. I don't know why that is. It just it just seems to be a bit strange, react strangely when I go with the grain. So going against the grain like this seems to work a lot better than going with the grain like this. I don't know why. Oh, did you see that? My hand might have been in the way, but see if I can make it happen again. Oh, it's not going to do it now. <laughs> A little flame erupted, that's all. Might need to make it hotter to get that flame to erupt for you. Let's try. Oh, 
amount of smoke coming off this thing is ridiculous. Alright, so we're almost there. We're in our last little bit of background blackness now. The um, handle of the machine is starting to get hot. So usually at this time I would give it a little bit of a break before coming back to it just to let it cool down. But at this stage we only have tiny little bit to go, a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit to go. So we'll just finish up. This last little section just, oh, oh, it's really getting my eyes. Okay. So I think that's it. We're done. All finished. Let's turn this off. You see the color drain out of the nip? All right. So we're just going to put this down like that. And we're all done. It's a really nice design that we've got going with this Celtic knot, Celtic circle. Um, the best thing about doing a lazy Susan or turning boy or whatever this is, uh, is that you can move it quite easily to get into those little tricky lines and corners and details. So yeah. this little bit of pyrography that we've done together um, and I hope that you are nice and calm and relaxed. Good night, good night, good night, good night.